the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to send her away. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not, until she had borne a son, and he called his name Jesus. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Ushuha la la minai. Ushuha la mshiha mara. So it's the beginning of a year, and we celebrate today the feast of the circumcision of Christ, which is the event that uh, was described at the end of the gospel that I. Read. And what I want to talk about is uh, prayer life. The beginning of a new year is a really important time to start uh, to think in a very deep way about your life of prayer and what that means. And I want to contrast two things. One is um, having a personal relationship with God, which is something that is really what prayer is. Uh, it's the very heart of prayer. But the thing that I want to contrast that with is letting our mood define our relationship to God. Those are two different things. Having my prayer life be mine, having my relationship to, to God be my relationship to God in a very deep and personal way is one thing. But having my mood dictate whether or not I pray, for example, or how I pray, or what I pray about, you are not your mood. And your relationship to God is yours, but it's not your mood's relationship to God. And the, the answer to this dilemma we find at the end of today's gospel. Jesus, uh, Son of God, was brought to the temple on the eighth day and circumcised in a liturgical ceremony. And that's the answer. The difference between having a true personal relationship with God and having your mood dictate your relationship with God is liturgy. Is a community prayer. Because whether or not you like it, we're going to pray the Chumana during Mass. This is a liturgical communal prayer. So it's not your mood that's defining it. Whether or not you like it, if you pray the morning prayer of the Chaldean Church, you're going to pray the 100th Psalm. And you're going to thank God for creating the world and bringing us life. Whether, it doesn't matter what your mood is. But it's still you praying. And so it's personal, but it makes you rise above the mood that you might have at any moment. And so, transformation is possible. Because if all you do is act on your mood, you're going to be the same old person at the same time next year. But if you let something be more important to you than your mood, and if you let something define and dictate your actions that's more than just how you feel at that moment, you will transform. And that's the only way to transform. And the liturgical prayer of a community, something that's bigger than you, will make you bigger than yourself. And so, Mary and Joseph presented Jesus. But they presented him in the temple, not in their own home. They went out of themselves into the, into the life of the community. They gave, uh, we know from Luke's Gospel, they gave a sacrifice of two pigeons. They gave a sacrifice. It was their own personal sacrifice, but they did it according to the law of Moses and the prescriptions of the community law, something larger than themselves. And we know from Luke's account of this 
that when they went to the temple and they circumcised Jesus and they offered the sacrifice, the old man Simeon got to take Jesus into his arms and he said that he glorified God in that way. When we get out of ourselves, when we move beyond our mood, when our prayer is personal but also liturgical, we actually have a chance to affect others and bring God's glory and God's light to them. Whereas, if it's just about me and how I feel right now, it's just about me. And nobody else makes any difference to me. That's not the way of God. And loving God and having a life of prayer that's yours does not exclude other people. In fact, it includes them on a very, very radical level. And so, this is a maybe a good way to start a, a new year, a life of prayer that's mine, that's deeply personal, that's nobody else's. But it is also at the very same time liturgical. It's part of a community prayer. It's part of uh, 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 a world that God has given to me rather than just me dictating.